Hello folks, Wilson J here bringing you another nerdy video. Um, today I have an interesting uh, series that I'm going to hopefully try and keep up to date. Um, unlike my last uh, vlogs, uh, well not vlog I suppose, this is just more of an audio recording with still image. But, um, but I have recently started uh, last Monday, um, it's, I'm getting, it's actually doing this late. Uh, I started, I joined Adventurers League, I had my first session uh, last week. Now, they're not playing the current season, but they're playing uh, the season um, t uh, Tyranny of Dragons. And the quest was uh, Courting of Fire. Now, sadly in my notes I admit, I, I misheard the, D, uh, the DM, which was understandable because there was like 50 people in the room all talking. So, uh, I'm going to try and ref uh, talk about my experience there. First off, amazing time. Uh, I had a few I issues with my um, some of my own so little spit of social anxieties, but it was amazing and I am so glad I did it. But, anyway, let's get on to talking about the adventure. Now, the adventure started off quite interesting. There was uh, a large, we actually had a large party. There was myself, a tiefling wizard, at uh, level one. I can't remember, I'll try and remember the levels, but like, forgive me, it's been a few days and I would have forgotten. There was Zeke, a wi uh, another wizard tiefling. Uh, he was level two, I believe, and he was the school of transmutation. There was Torin. A fighter human who I believe was level three. I, I think he was level four. Possibly, um, he had arcane. He had arc. Uh, there was no mention of a feat, but he did have um, action surge. And I'm not sure. Well, I can't remember what level they get that. There was Milo, a warlock. He was also a human. Uh, he was a hexblade warlock, to be more specific. There was also um, Raskul. Uh, a dragon, a red dragonborn barbarian. Uh, I believe he was level one, because there was no, he did not exhibit any like abilities that I would recognize. Uh, there is now here's a, a good one. Uh, Polya, a druid half elf. Now, the whole adventure was absolutely amazing. Um, I actually have all the adventurers leagues. Uh, stored on my computer uh, for if I ever want to run them for Friday I I planned to but in the end I decided not to because they take place somewhere that's not on the map of Faerun that the Wizards provides on their website instead they're, so, they're somewhere else hold on I'm trying to locate the season now uh, oh yeah yeah there is Court in the Fire now the Corner of Fire is a level 1 to 4 uh, quest range. Now my DM was more focused on the narrative gameplay rather than other stuff. So, now my character was new to the city. Again, it was my very, very first Adventurers League. Some of, the, two of the party, some of the party members had dealings in the past with some of the NPCs. Which came into play during the game. And I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed the fact that like, okay, yeah. There are some moments where the DM, where some of our actions in the past do actually come into play. So, uh, we'll get into that at some point. Hold on, I'm just trying to find where I can talk about. Because again, yeah, I'm trying to get some of the names of some things. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Because we spent some time uh, in this um, tea house. Okay, so it's not there. That's strange. Uh, inns and taverns. The Laughing Goblin Inn, the Cricket's Crown, Nero's Blood, the Velvet Doublet, Feast Hall. Uh, I honestly can't remember the na where, the, where the name of the tea house is. It was. It's featured in another adventure. Um, anyway, our characters were all sitting there, uh, recuperating from either a previous adventure or just surviving to the city, when all of a sudden we hear a commotion outside the tea house and a banging. 
I am not trying to draw too much attention to myself, keeping my character's hood up and his dark clothes, you know, in a way that will hide his face. I even have my tail wrapped around my waist, trying to show as very little, as little skin as possible. I also continuously kept turning my head and coughing, which was to disguise me casting tomaturgy on my eyes to give them a more of a human blue color. Anyway, so I sent my familiar outside, which was taking the form of a spider. I went under the door and looked outside. It was someone putting up a board. At which point, uh, Milo walks outside. He quit before the guard could even uh, finish nailing the poster to this uh, board. Milo quickly rips it down, heads inside to the TS, and holds up in the air and goes, "Who would like to go on this adventure with me?" Uh, my character, you know, agreed. He was. He, my character was like, "Yes, uh, I would like to join you." By the way, my character is his name is Martos. And we, we all sat down and we discussed, like, um, how should we proceed? I have, my character wears a small brooch with the symbol of the Xantarum to, to help sort of to identify himself as one. To those that were paying, much, paying more attention. Uh, Milo and uh, Raskul uh, were both Xantarum members. They revealed themselves by, their, by showing me the symbol. And we went off to, to see about if we can get in touch with some of our contacts to see if we can find out the location of this person. Because the, the quest was, we needed to search for uh, this character named, um, um, I typed, I, again, because of hearing issues, uh, I miss got the guy's name. Uh, his name was Spernick. I, oh, I actually got that right, Spernick. Sweet. Um. It was for Spernick. Uh, his descript the, the picture on the thing was not um, a very good kind of likeness, and it was clearly that they were trying to make him out to be much bigger, de uh, much hideous and horrible looking than he actually was. Which, if you think about it, was actually hurting their, um, you know, their chances of catching them. But anyway, we decided to head off to a bar, a tavern. And we got in touch with, apparently, the Zentarum had a task for us. We were, they wanted us to help locate a new base of operations for them. Somewhere in the Dragonspine uh, Mountains. Now. Uh, yeah. uh, where is it? Do, 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 Spernick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I had mentioned, I wrote some stuff down. Uh, where is it? So I'm, I'm trying to look at my own notes. Uh, there we go, here we go. Um, there we go. So yeah, Spernick was heading to the, uh, to the Dragon Spine Mountains that were a few that were like a days or two northwest of the city. Now, the rest of the party decided to go visit uh, the person who was issuing the bounty, uh, a Lieutenant uh, Bar Bar Barley? Barley? Let me get my notes. Uh, Lieutenant, yeah, Bal Balri, I think it is. Um, now, they were successful in getting to see him despite a line. They took ages trying to get to him. Uh, they just, they, it turns out his friend uh, was uh, Tabim, was already captured and, well, sadly executed. So we couldn't really get any information off him. He had. Um, a, a list that they found after he was killed and hanged, and it turns out it was a, sh uh, it was a weird shopping list. Now, to my ca uh, that's what the party made out, but they weren't too sure, so they kept the list. They then we, we all re uh, came back to the tea house where Zeke was awaiting. Zeke decided to stay put while um, Ross Cool. Milo and myself checked uh, Charles and Tarim contacts, when then Torin and uh, Polya checked, um, you know, through the, the city guard. So Zeke just stayed back sipping tea for the entire time. We decided to head to the Lord Sage because that's where apparently the stolen goods were. 
uh, being located. Upon speaking to the Lord Sage, we discovered that he w that um, Spernick and Tabim were clerks at the library, and strangely enough, they weren't. They didn't. St they didn't actually. They stole books, but they also left replacement books. They were. They spent a lot of time. Uh, carefully forging uh, these books and then putting them back uh, where they were. They were tr um, they put they the books were properly co uh, copied, with the, except that there are some parts of them missing. Um, two books in particular got the attention of the Lord Sage. Though it was the History of the North, and Lex, uh, Ge Geographics. So. We were curious about this. And so we went to his room and we, again, we searched his room. Uh, I, my character read off the list and it was, and I, I successfully um, concluded that, oh, these are basic scribing tools that they had. So which, again, it makes sense. There was nothing arcanic about it in terms of spells. So we, we uh, some of the rest of the party members, Zeke, uh, while the rest of us were discussing how to properly search, properly search the room, my character was trying to encourage uh, uh, Torin. Maybe it's best that he he stands guard outside. And in the end, we found a secret uh, compartment. Um, it contained uh, some dragon cult robes. Upon after discovering, like, oh shit, this guy is with the Dragon Cult. And we've also found out through uh, my own character and uh, Polya, we discovered that the books they take, they taken had more reference, were more focused on dragons. Especially uh, Las uh, Geographics, which revolved around a circle, a, a stone circle standing outside the Dragon Spine Mine, which be uh, belonged to a group of dragon worshipping dru druids. So, we decided to head back. Now, the Lord Sage is offering a fifty gold p uh, pieces reward for to be to, sorry, uh, Spernick to be returned to the to justice, while he's also offered an additional one hundred for any information on the books uh, on any other books that he may have taken. Our party agreed. We spent we went back to the uh, the tea house because it was been, it's been quite a while. And we want to head out fresh in the morning. That's when uh, Milo, my character, began reading his spell book. Just, you know, cruising his spells, uh, trying to plan out for his day. Um, my character often speaks to himself, so he starts speaking to himself in Inferno. My, uh, Torin was sitting uh, near my character, uh, at which point he decided to back away and sit as far away as he could, not knowing like what the hell was going on with my character he could he, uh, he couldn't identify what was going on especially after he saw that my spell book contained that the book i was apparently looking through had nothing but black pages with no writing on it so that's when milo sat down he stared at me asked me who's my patron i looked up to him and was like patron no 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 um uh, so I suppose if I was to have a patron, it would be my teacher back in the city of Tay. Or, perhaps, the person who brought me into the family, which is why he refers to the Zantarum as. Um, either way, Milo was unsure. He was like, hmm, are you a wizard or are you a warlock? He, he, in the end, he did not ask. Instead, he offered to play a game of cards. Now, both of us being proficient in card games, we both decided to, yeah, sure. He offered me a chance to double my money. Uh, I only had five gold pieces, and if I won, he would give me ten. So my character was like, sure, I have more to gain than I have to lose. So I agreed. We both attempted <laughs> to cheat at the game. He tried to cut the deck in a particular way so that he would win, and I was I used a combination of my find familiar and tomidurgy to uh, look at his hand. Uh, it was after I declared that then the player was like, oh yeah, how about we, um, we play high-low? 
either way, uh, I I noticed he was cheating. At which point I took back my money and congratulated him on his, uh, and both said, "Oh, so that's how you like to cheat." Our character sort of bonded over. The, uh, over the fact that we were both planning to cheat and we decided that if our paths ever cross again we should try and use uh, each other to help ma uh, make a good bit of money. Him with his card shuffling and me with my uh, eye in the, in, uh, on the ceiling. So we all had our long rest and we all ventured to fort. Uh, we, man we managed to rent out some horses for 10 gold pieces. We started riding out. We arrived shortly at the the Druid Circle. I've me and uh, Zeke already have prepared mage armor. It was at this point that my character stopped hiding that he was a tiefling, not uh, more so wanting to hide from just the general prejudices of thing. Not that the, he believed the party would be prejudiced, but just more so that the people around him maybe. So. Um, none of the party seemed to have paid no heed of mind to the sudden reveal that oh, Mortos is a tiefling. So we found the Drak Druid circles. Uh, we also then just quickly discovered that uh, there was a tunnel, there was a stairway leading down beneath them. Uh, Mortos uh, snapped his finger, something for his familiar, and he to uh, began to look through his familiar's eyes as he sent his familiar down through the tunnel as while well, the rest of the party attempted to wait to, as he reported what he finds. Sadly, without anyone noticing, a series of flying kobolds uh, began dropping rocks on us. Hitting, mort hitting uh, mortals square on the head put me unconscious. The rest of the party, uh, I was at this point that Milo quickly casted darkness on his weapon. No, the rest of the party did not know what was going on. Um, uh, luckily enough that, that several of the kobolds became towards them remembering whereabouts they were Milo tried to pull the darkness off of his allies while uh, running towards the enemy he could see in the dark possibly true an eldritch, eldritch invocation from his patron so for a good while, uh, the, as the battle ensued, the druid uh, slowly found her way towards my character after I failed at that saving throw. She uh, gave me a good berry, uh, sorry, several good berries, which restored me to four hit points. I awake, and I, like, I do not see anyone nearby, so I head out of the darkness, and I draw out my wand, wait, hoping to, to possibly aim at something. Uh, but I did not know where. I had, I had, unlike the rest of the party, I had no indication of where or who was attacking us. So I just simply waited and readied in action. The rest of the party qu uh, quickly, particularly uh, our barbarian, fighter and warlock, quickly started taking down, one after another, the kobolds. Uh, list relying on their sense of hearing over their sense of sight. Eventually the fight was over and uh, our warlock quickly dispelled the darkness. We, get, uh, get, we then decided to just head on inside. So we did. We headed on inside. We saw a chamber with a dining room table and three doors. I sent my familiar to check the door. We heard some strange noises coming from the other side. Before we could investigate any further, our fighter, Torin, had already stumbled forward and alerted some undead. So the battle ensued. Um, everything was going fairly well. Um, Nor Mortos uh, lashed out with his chill touch, attacking the further back undead, while Milo and Torin and... Um, I keep forgetting the, the Dragonborn name. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Roscoe. Where, as Roscoe first four to attack the ones closer by. Eventually one of the scale, one of the zombies got through and was approaching me. Uh, it was at this time, uh, Polya, before um, anyone uh, could see her, aside from the two wizards, she suddenly ran forward and transformed into a bear, startling our fire. For not knowing where did the hell did this bear come from? 
uh, the bear quickly, uh, Polly as a bear quickly uh, took care of many of the zombies. Whereas then one of the uh, zombies was approaching me and our, my fellow wizard. We kept attacking it from, uh, as it approached. When our warlock Milo quickly rushed back to help us, attacking it from behind. Upon defeating the the zombies, we decided to check out the rooms using my familiar, which the party found quite useful. They were happy that they did not have to go check the rooms themselves, and from the safety of being at a distance in case of any traps. We just, uh, I found we found that uh, the a barracks or a series of rooms with no bodies in them, including a pantry, which did not stop the ba our bear and Torin from going in and checking. I checked the other room. Which, which slowly revealed to be a dark pool of sorts with skeletons uh, on the wall. We decided to check that room out for it was suspicious. Sadly, uh, we were too late. I did not notice, but it turns out the skeletons were alive and they pulled themselves off the walls and they began to attack. The party quickly dispatched the skeletons, but it was what came out of the pools which alarmed everyone. Especially after our, after our uh, ally Torin threw his battle axe into the pool, hoping to hit whatever was apparently coming up from it, from it, without aiming. Uh, the creature that came out did not have an axe embedded in it, so sadly Torin had mi had missed. It was two ghouls. Now, the rest of the party managed to fend off the ghouls quite well. It was uh, really no bother. After we took care of the skeletons and were all able to focus on one at a time, we decided to head to the final door. The door was uh, a, it was grandiose. We did not know how to. We uh, I sent my spider through it, and it turns out whoever was on your side was waiting for us. A series of six kobolds and the person we were after. They had barred the door on their side. And they were determined. They were satisfied that we would not be able to get through. The door was made of wood, so our barbarian uh, just quickly swung down his his uh, battle axe, creating a small hole in the door. He then looked through it and just unleashed uh, draconic fire upon all, killing all but two of the kobolds and uh, badly injuring the three of them, as well as the person we were after. Um, we still could not get in. So until eventually, the bear, our Polly, our druid friend, as a, in the form of a bear, quickly burst through the door and charged at the enemy. She, uh, the kobolds quickly went down as the rest of the party now were able to storm through the doorway. We managed to get to the uh, Sp uh, Spurnik. He would not go unconscious. So after the fighter, not the fighter, attacked him, trying knock, trying to knock him out. Sadly. He injured him, but not nearly enough. He then bashed him with his shield, causing Spurnik to fall to the ground, and which at which point the bear sat on him. Uh, while having him pinned down, the rest of the party then proceeded to attempt to knock him out, all to no avail. Until several round, like about two rounds of combat, had gone by. Spurnik now uh, uh, unconscious. Uh, Mortals attempted to tie a knot. Sadly, not being very successful, the knot seemed very dodgy. So Mortos was determined to car to bring with him uh, Spurnik wherever they went. They checked out uh, four, two rooms before Spurnik, sorry, Mortos was finally like panting with the weight. After he's been, c since considering uh, in the room with the skeletons, upon defeating the ghouls and skeletons, he picked up all an entire skeleton and shoved it into his bag. Mortos is not the strongest of people, so this weighed a lot for him. And sadly he had to drag Spurnik, at which uh, up and down a flight of stairs. After which he, he was happy to just sit down and go through the notes that he had from uh, Spurnik, as well as the books that Spurnik has stolen. While the rest of the party checked the other rooms, because we found on the Spurnik two ident two similar looking objects of different color. 
and there was a doorway that seemed to have a thing that could fit. After, the first, after checking one of the rooms, we discovered, oh, these must be some sort of keys that open that door. So while the rest of the party, uh, we went through tra uh, traps. The first one that led us to realise that we were dealing with some keys and trapped, that were trapped, we discovered that the, the black key had one cobalt whose half his face was melted off. The other was protected by a trap that of um, I, only could, I can only describe it as ice cold mist. The uh, one trap was protected by uh, lightning crossing over a bunch of oh how should I put it bolts like uh, they were like uh, pylons and the lightning was the gem that the gem that was there the key was that was there was preventing the lightning from crossing the path. It can only go side, like you know, from one pole to the other on the same side. But as soon as he picked up the, the key, the lightning started crossing this metallic path. In which case, our uh, warlock had to dash, dodging electricity back over, uh, over. The last puzzle was poisonous gas filled room, which luckily we managed to get the, all the keys together. Upon gathering all the keys, we proceeded to open the final door. Which was a, a hand carved red dragon door. Upon opening it, we saw this shield made from red metal, as well as two fiery spirits that urged us to to give up this path of seeking to control dragons. We informed them that we had no such desire, and we simply wished to stop them. Now. When Milo decided to ask, if we were to place the keys down in this room and close the door behind us, would it lock? Upon discovering that it would lock, we, that's exactly what we decided to do. We had no interest in this uh, taming of dragons, and for all intents and purposes, we completed our task here. And we, and we had no interest in fighting with these uh, whites. Upon closing the door, we decided to head back with our, uh, uh, with our bounty and turn them in. Sadly, this meant that for the Zantar members, we failed our objective. Because for it turns out that the Zantar were not happy with the idea of using that temple as their base if they could not have access to all the rooms. So, we all sat down, split up our rewards, so, uh, one of us got a nice little uh, uh, ring of fire resistance, whereas then our fighter got a silver scimitar. The rest of us got nothing except for gold, which for some cases is plenty. But yeah, that was my first Adventurers League game, I do not know how different he went off the book again apparently each uh, all of them have their own uh, play styles and to be honest with you I really don't m matter how if how much he changed it was a great uh, adventure and I truly I truly enjoyed uh, this adventure and I'm hoping that we get a chance to I hope we get a chance to play with the exact same people again but who knows that's the problem with um, how should I put it playing uh, Adventurers League sometimes you may not always be with uh, what's it called the same players but who knows at least now my character has had some experience traveling through um, the area. So exploring Flan, he knows that there are some allies. He's made an impression on some people, you know, and that's all he can ask for. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to going back, and hopefully I'll be able to keep it. Uh, and hopefully he'll continue his adventures and have some fun. 
Either way, it was really amazing. This is Willful Ninja, signing out. May the force be with you. And remember, roll for initiative.